Well, speaking of home runs, what about this week, Aaron Judge setting the American lead home run record for a season with 62 home runs. Pretty cool to see, pretty incredible. Uh, you know, there's nothing like getting a home run. There's nothing like winning. And uh, that's what our series has been about. Uh, we have a mission as a church, helping people move towards God, helping people discover who Jesus is. Uh, but we also have a vision to go after the mission. And as we go after the mission, uh, you know, we want to win. Like, no one wants to lose. But the scorecard is different for the church than for the world, okay? We have to remember that. The scorecard looks a little bit differently. And so we've defined that for us to go after the mission to be a share, shape, send church. And so we've talked about the idea of being a sharing church, the idea of having the gospel message on the tip of our tongues, being ready to share. And if you haven't yet downloaded the QR code, really want to encourage you wherever you're watching. If you don't have this on your home screen yet, I'm mad at you, okay? If you're watching for the first time, I'm not mad at you. Uh, but I will be mad at you if you don't download this and get this on your phone. Because this will remind you to have the gospel on the tip of your tongue. It will remind you to pray for opportunities, to be ready to share the most empowerful thing that could ever be heard on someone's ears. This is the most powerful, the most powerful thing that you can ever speak is the power of the good news of Jesus. And so this is a great acronym to help you uh, stay organized, to help you have the courage and the confidence when you feel a little like, I don't know what to say, or you feel a little nervous. That's normal. And so this has always helped give me confidence to share my faith, okay? And so we've been talking about the idea of what does it look like for us to get on first as many times as possible. And remember, to get on first is the attempt to get on first is literally just asking the question, can I share? Because we never share the gospel without asking permission. And so it's asking the question, can I share? And if they say no, it's okay. You still get on first because you had the courage to ask the question, can I share? And so we have a goal uh, throughout our church for the next year is what will happen? What would it look like for us to have 700 gospel conversations, 700 attempts to get on first? And so in our Plymouth location and in our Lion location, you'll notice uh, this ping pong ball thing out there uh, with the uh, baseball diamond there on the wall. And what you do to measure is every Sunday or every time you come to the church, you can grab a white ball for s someone that you made an attempt and you tried to share, then you write their name on and you just drop it right in there. And if someone actually received Jesus or came to you to church or whatever it is, then you can grab a yellow ball and write their name and drop it right in and we'll measure how many gospel conversations have we shared throughout the season. I believe we can do it. Uh, it's gonna take all of us. And so are you ready to share? Make sure you're equipped. Make sure you get this memorized. It's so key. It's so important for us to be a healthy church. Well, not only do we share, but we also need to shape to be a group of people that are constantly conditioning constantly sharpening, getting better, looking more like Jesus, talking more like Jesus, sharing more like Jesus, being exactly what I just said, more like Jesus. And so that's, in a sense, our discipleship process that we have as a church. We talked about that last week, going through our seven key mile markers. Really, really important that we have that. And so then, if we just are a church that just gets on first and just gets on second, and we, if we just share our shape, and that's all we're doing, we're not getting any runs. We're not getting the full completion of getting people home. And so that's why we have to be ascending church, the idea of going, the idea of multiplying, equipping, sharing, to then send people home. Uh, a few weeks ago, my son had a scrimmage at one of his games, and you know, it's a scrimmage, and so the kids are having fun, taking more risks than they normally would on a real game. And uh, my boy hits a triple way out there, and he's coming all around. He's going around to th uh, third, and um, they throw to third, and he slides in, but they overthrew it. And so the coach, you know, was a little risky and just sent him. He said, send him. And so he sent him and Tristan starts flying in and slides into home. And literally within a second, they caught it and tagged him out. And so it went from a 
triple to almost home run to literally being out. And he's just like, ah, oh, you got to be kidding me. And, uh, you know, we were just talking and, you know, cheering about the, the, the great hit. I tell you that story because sometimes sending uh, can be bittersweet. You know, sending, it's risky. And sometimes, you know, when you're, when you're going for it, it can be very bittersweet. It can be very rewarding, uh, but can also be very, very disappointing. Um, but so why do we still do it? You know, 70%, here's the stat. It's a crazy stat. Uh, 70% of church plants within the first two years die. They get out. They don't make it. They don't get home. Um, so you might ask, well, why would we do that? We're going to talk about that today. Um, but it's so important that we still get up to bat and swing in church plant. One of uh, my friends, he's the president of the Sun Network, and he said, you know, Travis, he says, sometimes when you get up at bat and you church plant, sometimes you hit a single and you get a church of 100 people, or sometimes, you know, you hit a, a, a double or a triple and there's a thriving church that's a multiplying church, but sometimes you strike out. And it doesn't work. And no matter how much you prepared, no matter how much you trained and tried and did all the things that you could do, um, you strike out. And he said, but just because you strike out doesn't mean that you still don't have the courage to get back up to the plate and swing and keep trying to church plant because there's too much at stake. There's too much at stake. And so today... Uh, it's another exciting day in the life of Mile City because today we are sending out another church plant. Uh, within the last seven weeks, this will be our third church plant that we're sending out in seven weeks. Just so you know, we didn't plan that. Uh, if this was our plan, we wouldn't have done that. Uh, God is the one who's orchestrated this timing and uh, it's been crazy. Uh, but today we sent out Maki and Sunny as they plant Hikari City Church. And so I want you to take a look at this video. Hikari. Hikari is a big one. It's 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 a 光がないと何もできないすべてが凍りつき暗闇の中では何も育たない光がないとどこに行けばいいかどうかもわからない私たちの心から希望も喜びも消えてしまう一つの小さな光に力があるこの光は私たちの心と体と魂を動かす力を持っている暗闇は決してこの光に打ち勝つことはできない私たちはいつもいろいろな光を求めて生きている自分の夢や希望から来る光お金から来る光余暇や快楽から来る光どの光もいずれ消え去っていく花火がドーンと打ち上げられて夜空を一瞬きれいに飾ることはあったとしても次の瞬間再び暗闇が訪れる私たちマイルシティではその真実の光に人々を導きたいその光を見せその光のようになってその光を世界に放ちたい私たちが世界の光だからです。Well, wow, that is just, every time I see that video, I just get jacked up, Maki and Sonny. Yeah. I mean, what a powerful video, and not just because it looks cool, but because of what is behind it, and uh, to help people see the light. And uh, Maki, I can't believe we're here. I mean, how long have you been here now? <laughs> Two and a half years. Two yeah. and a half years. If you didn't know, Maki and Sonny came from the whole other side of the world in Asia. <laughs> Two weeks before the world shut down. Yeah. And uh, it's just been an amazing journey For having sure. you here as a just um, 
just as a teammate, a brother, a friend. It's yeah. just been incredible. Incredible. You know, I've, I've had to deal with all the times that you've pranked me and have scared <laughs> me. And so I pranked yeah, you. Yeah, it's just one of it's those you things. you pranking me. Yeah, right you know, so that's okay. <laughs> but uh, no, but tell us, tell us a little bit about, you know, launch Sunday is next week. How, how are things going? Let, let uh, the church family yes, know. Yes, the launch Sunday is next, uh, next week. Uh, we're going to have our service from 11.15. And um, I hope, you know, p- people that we've been connecting in the past two years would, would show up. We have about um, 30 people um, expecting to come on the launch day. And okay, let me, let me just stop you, though. So when you think about 30 people in percentages in terms of what we do with other church planting, I mean, this is, this is a big deal. Because when you have a population of 15,000 or so right. in this area with a whole other type of worldview that aren't Catholic or have Protestant background or just kind of numb, kind of but understand Jesus, this is it's a big deal. Right. And uh, so that's, that's incredible. And so um, keep going. What else? Yes, and uh, we're just going to have uh, a worship service, you know, together and... Um, you know, hopefully there will be people who never heard the gospel as well, right? So that they will hear the gospel and, you know, get to know Jesus from that point. It's a long journey. It's just a beginning. Yeah. And we're just excited uh, how God's going to show off in the next, uh, you know, few years and hopefully longer than that. But, yeah, it's we're amazing. excited about it. Well, we as a family of churches, uh, we're so excited for you guys. Sonny, we're so grateful for you. I mean, I was just super excited when I could start having a conversation with you. I mean, when you think about, you know, coming all the way over here, you know, Sonny knows Japanese and Korean and then has been learning English. I was just, I'll never forget when we had our first, like, we had a conversation. It was amazing. It's amazing. Um, But church family, uh, we need your help to continually spread the word to our friends and our neighbors. You might have some Japanese neighbors or coworkers. They need to know that there is now, next week, officially, a Japanese-speaking service in Plymouth, Michigan, in the Burroughs factory, and we just couldn't be more excited about that happening. Maki, anything that you want to say to the church family? Yes, uh, I'm, I'm just thankful, Travis, for um, all the relationships that we got to build, you know, because uh, church planting is not just about learning the nuts and bolts of how to church plant, but it's about support. It's about uh, not being lonely out there. Having that relationship with the people here at Miles City has been so huge, and I hope that even after we launch this, continue, that this relationship will continue and that we get to, you know, support each other, pray for one another, and just uh, what a blessing to be part of this church, yeah. what a blessing it is, yeah. Sunny, anything you want to say to the church family? Uh, yeah, I just to say thank you. Yeah, thank you and thank you, yeah. So my city, uh, like, gift from God, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, thanks, thanks for Travis, and yeah, of course, thanks, for, thanks, thanks God, and thanks for every, everybody. Yeah, that's it. It's <laughs> awesome, amazing. And so we just, we're, we want to pray for you guys. So just, let's just come together and pray. And just uh, across our family of churches, let's just uh, lift up Maki and Sonny and their daughter, Reka, as they launch Hikari City in person. One of the amazing things, too, is that, you know, it is sending, but it's like you're right here. Right. So you're right here in our Plymouth location building here at the boroughs. And so uh, it's, it's not like, you know you're going away. Like, right. we're, we're like we, you're here. So it's not, it's not that bitter for us. Okay. You know, so. <laughs> well, thanks. Yes. Guys, for yes. That. <laughs> All right. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for Maki and Sonny and for their willingness to answer the call, to go through the inconvenience of leaving everything, to come to Detroit to reach people for you. They could have done a lot of other things. They could have like had held on to so many different comforts, culture and friendships, and but no, they answered the call to reach people for you specifically here in this season. And so thank you for that model. Uh, help us to grab onto that today as we think about sending. 
But God, we just ask that you would just show off your power like never before. God, that the Japanese people in this area would just have so much curiosity about Hikari mm. and that you would just draw them in in the name of Jesus. And that as they explore, um, that any of those roadblocks, God, that your spirit would just punch right through it mm. and that they would see how much you love them and want a real relationship with them. Father, we ask right now, as Maki and I have prayed, that you would rise up the next Japanese church planter mm. to go back to the land of Japan mm. that's 0.2% mm. Christian and start a church in Japan. Yeah. And so we can't wait to see what you're going to do. Thank you again for Maki and Sonny. Protect them. We love you. And we pray this in the power of your son's name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you, Maki and Sonny. We love you. It's going to be fun. Thank you so we'll much. We'll see you next Travis. week. Let's give it see up for Maki week. and Sonny, wherever you're listening and watching. And so, so awesome. So where does this whole sending, multiplying idea come from? Like, let's kind of go back to the beginning. And so where we get the idea for multiplying goes all the way back to the book of Genesis. Let's go for a little journey here. It says this, and God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish in the sea and over the birds in the heavens and over every living thing that moves on earth. And then God said to Noah, and you be fruitful and multiply, increase greatly on the earth and multiply in it. And then a little later, God is talking to Abraham about his son, Ishmael. As for Ishmael, I have heard you. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and multiply him greatly. He shall father 12 princes and I will make him into a great nation. And just one more. Then it says in Genesis 28, three, Isaac, another one of Abraham's sons is talking to his son. He says this, God almighty bless you and make you fruitful and multiply you that you may become a company of peoples. And so here we see from the beginning some groundwork of where multiplication got started. Now, some of you are like, well, that doesn't really seem like the best interpretation of scripture, Travis. I mean, it doesn't seem like he's talking about going and multiplying like church planting. It seems like he's talking about having babies, making babies, having kids. And, you know, some of you are like, well, good, sign me up. I'm good for that. Others of you are like, I've had enough. I don't need any more kids. So yes, the principle here, uh, the command, the, the, the principle is relating to having kids, but the groundwork and we see the importance that God sees in multiplying goes all the way back to here in scripture, that multiplying is important to God, which then brings us up to this whole talk uh, about the last command that Jesus gave before he ascended into heaven, Matthew 28. He says this, go therefore and make disciples, multiply, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is what it's all about, going everywhere, telling everyone about the good news of Jesus. And so how then? So when it comes to telling people about Jesus, what Jesus set up was not uh, a band, was not a sports team, was not uh, just some random evangelist. No, 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 no. He set up the vehicle of the local church. We know that the church is not a building. A building is just a building. A church is filled with people. And he has made the vehicle of the church the way for people to hear about his love. The statistics are crazy how more people are willing to check out and go to a new church than go to an old, traditional, established church. The population of the world keeps growing out of control. And the amount of churches that are being started and the amount of churches that are being closed doesn't even compare to the rate of the population. We need so many more churches to be planted. This is interesting. Check this out. If our church... In the next 30 years, Mile City, so we just turned seven. Let's just say our church 
grew to 30,000 people in 30 years. What type of impact do you think that would make just on the metro Detroit area when you look at the population of, De of Detroit? Here's what it would make. We would make a less than 1% impact on our city. Okay, I mean, I guess it's a number. I guess there's some fruit there. But I don't know about you, but I, 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 I want to see some more wins than just that. Like, I don't want to just like give my life or give energy and effort being involved in a local church and like, this is what we get to see. So how about this? Check this out. If five churches, just five, in the metro Detroit area, so let's say us and four other churches, Lord willing, the churches that we've helped plant, multiplied themselves, started another church every three years, and only had a 200 people reach. I'm not talking about attendance. I'm talking about the reach that they're making, the influence they're making. Okay, so they might be a church of 100, but they're having a 200 person reach. If every five, if five churches multiplied over 30 years and multiplied every three years like this in a, in a 30 year span, look at, the, look at the impact that we would have on our city. 25 between 25 and 32%, we would have an impact on the city of Detroit for the gospel good news of Jesus. Sign me up for that. Now, we're not gonna be a famous church. We're not gonna be in the largest churches of America magazine. We're not gonna have, you know, books. People aren't gonna be like, you know, you know just wanting to like, you know, blow us up of like, wow, 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 Miles City. No one will even hear about us but the impact and how Jesus will be made more famous in Detroit, that is what I'm talking about. Now, um, we see this displayed uh, all throughout the book of Acts. If you just a little info on the book of Acts, it's literally a history lesson on how to start churches. The disciples are out preaching and teaching and uh, everywhere that they can, trying to tell everyone. But then comes along a man named Saul and he doesn't like it. And so he starts killing and persecuting and putting people in prison. Anyone who declared or talked about Jesus, they were after them. And so one of those key people was a man named Stephen. And he was out there just sharing and sharing and sharing. And unfortunately, Saul had Stephen stoned to death. Take a look at what happened. Acts chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. It says, And Saul approved of his execution. And there arose on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles, it continues. Devote men buried Stephen and made great lamentations over him. But Saul, that didn't even faze him, was ravaging the church and entering house after house. He dragged off men and women and committed them to prison. Now those who were scattered... They went about preaching the word. Even though that happened, even though Stephen was killed, followers of Jesus kept running throughout the regions, sharing and starting churches. And here's what happens, Acts 11, it says this. Now those who were scattered because of the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Cyrene and Antioch, speaking the word to no one except Jews. It continues. There were some of them, men of Cyprus and Cyrene, who on coming to Antioch spoke to the Hellenists also, preaching the Lord Jesus, and the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number who believed turned to the Lord. I just want to pause here for a moment, and I highlighted this concept of the men of Cyprus and Cyrene were scattering and sharing and starting churches, and we don't even know their names. We see two things, that they went everywhere preaching. The second thing is that we don't even know their names. They made Jesus famous, sent out by the church to start other churches in other cities at the risk of losing their life. 
God has chosen this church, the church, to multiply, to send out new churches, to go into communities and cities and reach people with the good news of Jesus. He wants to send out people more concerned about building God's kingdom and not their kingdom. He wants to send out churches that are more concerned about building up other people's platforms instead of building their own platform. What kind of kingdom, here's a question for us to make this applicable to us today. What kind of kingdom are you building? Is your life dedicated to building something bigger than yourself, bigger and greater than your name, bigger than your possessions, than your athletic ability, than your skill set, than your job promotion? What kind of kingdom are you building? Are you willing, here's the thought, this is, are you willing to be unknown? so that more people can know the name of Jesus? Are you willing to be unknown so that more people can know the name of Jesus? So why do we do this? Why should this be so important to us as individuals? Well, because God told us to. Some of you, as you're sitting here and you've been a part of our family of churches, you you, you, you're okay with the concept of church planting. Others of you get a little tired about hearing about church planting all the time and you just tolerate it. Others of you get a little more jacked up and excited about it. Others you think, you know, yeah, it's the greatest thing ever. Some of you might be new to the concept of what we're talking about with church planting and you're just hearing this for the first time. Regardless of who you are, let me allow you to just encourage you uh, of what it means for us to be a church planting church. In 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 9, verses 6 through 9, it normally talks about this from the lens of giving and tithing, but I want to look at this through the lens of church planting. It says, the point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in heart. Not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, continues. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things and at all times, you may abound in every good work as it is written. He has distributed freely, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. It says that he has distributed freely, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Here we see modeled for us a great God that has freely given us his grace. And Paul is challenging us to give bountifully in the same way. And so when we are willing to multiply, we, when we're willing to send, what is it doing? It is showing open-handedness instead of closed-handedness. It's modeling generosity. Last week, we as a church um, were able to see the launch of Lanterns Church. And uh, it was exciting. It was, it was just amazing. Um, but there was a big chunk of people that went from our Plymouth location to the Lanterns. And these weren't just, you know, random people. These were dynamic, outgoing, energetic people that were ready to reach the city of Wayne. And, you know, you could feel the hole in our Plymouth location. You could kind of feel that bittersweet kind of losing, you know, gaining by losing in a sense. And so sometimes, right, generosity and being a church planting church hurts. It hurts. It's like, what the heck? You're looking around and you're like wondering, okay, wow, we're so excited about this, but man, it kind of leaves you feeling a little, ugh. But may we be reminded that it's so stinking worth it. I mean, just last week, nine people in the city of Wayne put their hand up to receive Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. And if that church wasn't planted in Wayne, they weren't gonna come to Lyon, they weren't gonna come to Plymouth, they weren't gonna come to Farmington. It's literally in their backyard. When we follow the model of generosity that God set, when we it inspires, what does it do? It inspires others to be generous. And not only that, it actually, right, it makes our church healthy. It makes our church um, keep winning because what does it do? It gets people off the bench because when people go, 
then it's like we're looking around and it's time to get more involved. It's time to, hey, farm team, it's time to stop sitting on the bench. It's time to get involved. It's time to get trained. It's time to develop and get into positions where maybe you've just been seeing other people do it. And so I just wanna encourage you that if you invest in this church with your time and your talents and your treasure, just know that you are a part of this great commission mission. Like when you invest here, when you give here, of all the different things, of all your different energies, man, just be encouraged. You are part of multiplying. You're part of what God designed in the book of Acts because at Mile City, we are always building towards multiplying. We are always going to be a church that is building towards multiplying. It might not be, you know, three churches in one year. But man, we will be constantly looking at what does it mean for us to be a church that goes, that multiplies with church planting and missions so that the name of Jesus can get to the ends of the earth. Where might you need to jump in? Maybe, let's be real, you've been sitting on the bench and you haven't been shaping with the idea of sending. I'm not saying that you're supposed to go, but how are you investing here to help others go? Where might you need to get in the game? Um, We need to be a church that constantly cares about sending out churches, sending out people, sacrificing, setting aside funds where we could use those funds for ourselves, but saying, no, 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 we're gonna be a church that helps plant other churches. We wanna be a church that helps create more new spaces for people to come to know Christ. And when we do that, we are being a picture of the surpassing grace of God. And so for some of us, That might mean us rearranging our finances so that we can be a part of giving through Miles City to church plants. For others, it might be that we would help train up the next group to go out. Maybe that's to equip, um, uh, you know, specific areas, or maybe it's setting aside time, praying specifically for our latest church plants of the Lanterns and Hikari and the Sea Church. Or maybe, just maybe, it's God calling you that you're supposed to be sent. Maybe, just maybe, you're the next church planner and you don't even know it. And it's, there's something stirring in you that you're supposed to explore what it means to be sent, to be on mission in that way. Whatever it is, are you willing to put your interests aside? Are you willing to put you being known aside so that others can know? Jesus. When we are all in on sending, it's a picture of the surpassing grace of God. When you are all in on sending, it's a picture of the surpassing grace of God. So for some of you, I don't know what that means. Maybe that's going to be you rearranging your finances to give through Miles City to help more and more church plants. Maybe that's going to be you hopping on a team here to... um, help train up and equip others that will eventually go. And maybe it means that you're eventually gonna go or maybe, just maybe, you're a future church planter or a missionary or who knows that God will start messing with you. What will it look like for you to put your will aside, put your interests aside and put the interest of God's kingdom and his will at the forefront. And if that happens, if all of us do our part as a church family to be sharing, to be shaping, and to be sent, man, we are gonna see so much win. We're gonna see so many home runs, so many people sliding into home. And when we say sliding into home, It's running home to Jesus. And we do this, right? All this, we make these sacrifices, these inconveniences that sometimes it feels because of the inconvenience 
and everything that Jesus was willing to sacrifice for us. I mean, you think about, I mean, how massive is this? What God has done for us to make a way that we can run home to him. I mean, he made a way. I mean, we were literally out of the game because of our sin. It literally separated us. There was no way for us to even get into the game. And then he did the unthinkable. He sent his all-star, Jesus, here on this planet to come and to literally live a perfect life, show us the model of generosity and grace. And then he paid the penalty for our mess, for our sin by dying on a cross. And then three days later, proving he was God, rising from the dead. And the scriptures say that all who call upon the name of Jesus will be saved, not by your behavior, but literally through your belief. And when you get to the point to believe, to say, yes, I believe in Jesus, game over, game over. So I don't know where you're at on your journey, but if you have not put your faith in Jesus yet, if you have not received this amazing sacrifice that he's done for you, then I wanna give you that opportunity right now. And so wherever you're listening, wherever you're watching, just, just say, Father, thank you for the sacrifice that you've done for me. Thank you for the open-handedness that you've done for me. I know I'm a sinner. I know I've messed up. I don't understand it all, but I believe that you are the one that has the power to take away my sin problem. And so thank you for dying. Thank you for rising again. Right now, I receive you, Jesus, to be the king of my life. As we continue to pray, if you truly meant that, the scriptures are so clear that you will no longer perish, but now you'll have everlasting life and your life starts now and it lasts forever. Heavenly Father, thank you so much um, for the model of generosity that you've shown us. Thank you that the gospel and the churches and the churches and the churches have multiplied and multiplied and multiplied so that Mile City and the Trails Church could be planted and started. May we be great stewards and continue to be churches that multiply out of us and have a heart to be sharing, shaping, and sending. We love you and we pray this in the power of your son's name. Amen. Amen. Well, if you made a decision to put your faith and trust in Jesus, we want to beg you to not walk alone. And so you can just text the number there on the screen. And one of our team members will get up with you to celebrate and answer any questions you have.